G'day everyone, Day 9, Stud Detector, aka Capacitive Nulling Bridge. This is a simple, well, relatively simple circuit for measuring basically capacitance. Um, like, a, like a Wheatstone bridge, it uses um, the ratio of a, two pairs of capacitors and a, um, a transformer which picks off the signal at the centre of the bridge to match basically you know, the ratio of two, the two arms of the bridge. So what it's actually doing when it's acting as a stud detector is basically measuring the, the dielectric constant of the material around the stud detector. So when it's up against a, a surface, I'll show you the actual implementation here. So we've got, it's just made on printed circuit board. I've divided the printed circuit board into two long fingers. This one is the um, is a pickup plate and this is the, the ground reference plane. So the, the ground plane is also what I built the circuit on, but the capacitance between this plane, you can see as I touch it, I add more capacitance, um, and the ground is measured by the bridge. So there's a capacitor here that we can use to null the bridge. As you can hear, it's just ticking over slightly every now and then because it's not quite perfectly nulled. So if I unnull it, It's actually a good idea when you're using it to have it, you know, making a tick every now and then so it's actually got some sensitivity because it's much easier for you to see the, you can see even the, my screwdriver has enough of a difference in dielectric constant to the vacuum or air than, um, well, I guess it's the plastic and probably the metal tongue goes up in there a little bit as well, but to produce a, an indication on this. So when you put it up against a wall or up against my book, whatever here, you would null it to um, you see when I touch it my body capacitance makes it drift a little bit too so it's not a perfect circuit but it's uh, it certainly works and I've used it to um, to find some things in walls ah. okay so my book will act as a good proxy here so it has more or less some dielectric constant that's obviously larger than air, but as I approach the metal here in the book spine, the increase in capacitance because of the coupling between the metal and the, the, the metal coil here in the spine significantly increases the, um, the unbalance of the bridge. Okay, so how does it work? First of all, we have an oscillator. Uh, it's just a Pierce oscillator. It's using a color burst crystal to just generate some RF. Um, it's actually a fair few volts peak to peak here. The whole thing runs off a nine volt battery. I know everyone loves my nine volt battery topper projects, even though in this particular case, it's a little bit unwieldy compared to most of my battery topper projects. But uh, yeah, I know you love them and I'll do some more of them. And I really love them too. I think it's a convenient way to, uh, to build little test hacks like this. Okay, so we have Pierce oscillator feeding the bridge. The bridge has um, two arms, one of which is basically set up to be nine times as much capacitance as the other side. These are the plates, the reference plate and the, the detector plate. Between the two arms of the bridge we have a transformer. So the transformer picks off the two voltages at these nodes and when they're balanced, as closely as you can balance them, there's obviously some strays in here that, that there probably would have been a good idea to add a couple of other trimmers to, to null it completely, but you can null it quite deeply. The, the, the null is, is deep enough for our purposes, let's put it that way. So the transform picks, if both sides of the bridge are the same, then the voltage on both sides rides up and down together and there's no current in the transformer, so there's no output. This is a, just an amplifier, this is a normal um, common source amplifier. Um, it's just amplifying the RF up, probably has a gain of about 10 or 15, I think I didn't actually measure it, to produce a signal that then drives this circuit, which is actually the, I think it was day four in 2012. This is the RF sniffer circuit, more or less. Um, what I've done is I've used the transformer coupling again, which means the thing has two transformers, which is a bit annoying to wind, and I probably could have done it with resistive coupling throughout, but we are talking about transformers lately, so I thought I might as well show a bifailer wound transformer as well. So there's two transformers, both of which are identical, they're 15 bifailer turns. 
on a um, FT50-43, so they're a, a high, um, high mu ferrite, so they have good coupling, and they've got about, I think it's 200, no, 160 microhenries of um, inductance for you know, each winding, which is, for this frequency, is just, just fine. Um, there's a couple of rules about impedances. Generally, if a transformer is being used in an RF circuit, then it should have th at least three, preferably five to ten times the reactance of the load impedances that it will be seeing. Um, so it'll, you know, it, it'll basically work well and, and will not represent a, um, a lower impedance than what would be the load impedance. Okay, so this circuit you can, I'll link in the description the previous year's um, article about this, but basically we've got a biased diode, I'm using a 1N5711 Shakti rectifier. Um, it's driving a Super Beta MPSA18 transistor which then pulls current out of the piezoelectric sounder, which is the speaker that's actually making the clicking sounds. So as it pulls current out of this, the voltage along it drops. So imagine start with it starting it with it charged. So this thing's charged up, it pulls current out, eventually this drops below the threshold of the base emitter drop of this transistor, and this is the, the complementary um, pair that I'm quite fond of, as we know from uh, 2012. And once it drops below the bias point of its base, this transistor turns on, which turns on this transistor, and the whole thing saturates for an instant and charges up the piezoelectric speaker again, making it click. This process repeats itself. The 330k resistor is there to make sure the thing will terminate and won't lock on like a thrysistor. Um, but it also sets the upper frequency bound, as you can tell when I'm when I'm maxing it out that doesn't go right up to a much higher pitch, that's kind of like, that's the 330k resistor's um, charge rate into this capacitance. So the piezoelectric speaker has about 18 to 20 nanofarads of capacitance, which is actually an important part of the circuit. Okay, um, that's pretty much it. It's, uh, it's a fun little toy. It, uh, it's obviously an electric, not a magnetic version, and it's many... Um, Commercial stud detectors have power line detection as well. This thing doesn't really have any sensitivity to that. It certainly could have been built such that it would have, but in the way it's constructed, it's more of a pure capacitance measuring device. You could certainly use this as a capacitance measurer as well. The If you think about it, it's really three things. It's an RF power source, so it's just a simple oscillator, in this case a Pierce oscillator. It's the bridge itself, which you can use to measure you know, inductances, resistances, whatever. It's the same kind of structure. You just swap out the components such that when the whole thing nulls, the voltage induced on this transformer is zero. And this part is basically the null detector, which is just an amplifier really driving some kind of display device. In this particular case, a piezo speaker could just as easily have been a meter or an LED an LED bar graph maybe, like the couple of days ago, one of our projects. So, nulling detector, bridge, and signal source generator. That's pretty much all there is to any kind of bridge, whether it be an inductance bridge, or general impedance bridge, or a capacitive bridge like this one. Okay, any questions, um, please put them in the comments. I will put any additional information in the um, description down below. And until next time, see you later. Bye.